let's start this programming process. The beginning has already been done for you. You're going to go to your Python lesson. So open up your document. You're going to see a link here to a template that's going to give you part of the code. Okay, now it is lesson eight, so I'll go ahead and change that. And I want you to type in your name and the date, and we'll begin. This program will let you code a mouse click so you can determine if you are clicking on an image. It will also use random numbers, and it will show a new way to use the draw function. The code has many functions or procedures already set up for you, but you will need to add the code. The functions have the word pass in them right now. You can take a look at, as you scroll through. You'll see the functions beginning and the word pass in there so that the program will run without giving you an error. You will take out the pass and put in actual code to complete this game. First, you will need two random numbers for this program. The random numbers will select a random position, X and Y, for the ghost to appear on the canvas. So this is like in algebra, when you have a quadrant and you have the X, and the X's go across, and the Y's go up and down. So you're going to have an X position is how far over on the screen, and a Y position is how far up or down on the screen. You want your ghost to appear. These will be global variables, so define them near the top of your code by the other global variables. We're going to come up here there near the top, here's our global variables. I can even put in a comment that says global variables. So whenever I do a comment, I'm going to use a little hashtag there. Here's my global variables. I'm going to add two more, and they're going to be x and y. Now to do this, we're going to use a function called randint, and it's part of the random module. So see right up here, we imported random. And in random, there are several little functions, and one of them is the randint. And that's the one that we're going to use. So I'm going to have x equals, and I have to say random because that's the module it's coming from, and then randint. Now, randint has two parameters. One is low and one is high. Now, we're going to substitute low and high for the actual numbers that we want. What's the lowest random number and the highest random number? Now, the x is going to be for my position across. Let's take a look at the size of my frame. I come down here and I see that my x is 400. So I want a number between 0 and 400. But if I use those, then it's going to go all the way to the very edge. And I really want to keep it kind of in the middle. So I'm going to go a little more than 0 and a little less than 400. So I'm going to have 20 and 380. I need to do another one for the y position. So once again, I access random module random function. I'm going to want 20. And let's take a look at the height. And this one is 300, so I want a little less than 300, so we'll put 280. So now I have two random numbers for the position of my ghost. Let's run the code. We shouldn't have any errors and nothing will happen, but as long as you don't have any errors, that's a good thing. So everything is good so far. You want to do incremental development, we do a little bit of code at, the, at one time and test it, and make sure you don't have any errors. That way when you do have an error, you know you've narrowed it down to just a couple lines of code. Now we're going to modify our draw function. So the draw function is near the end here. Here is our draw function. We're going to modify it so that it can display a ghost after the introduction. There are two parts to this. We're going to, we already have an else here, and we're going to add some code to the else part to, in our draw function. The first part, right here, shows the introduction. The else part will show the ghost. So you're going to need to type in some code here, and I'm going to display it on the screen, and then give you some time to type it. Now when you run your program, you'll see that you don't have any errors, but still nothing happens. You need to do one more thing. You need to change the value of intro. You'll see here in your draw that you're going to do the intro as long as this variable is true. Intro is a global variable up here at the top. 
So you need to change its value to false, but you don't want to do it here because then you'll start without the intro. So you're going to change the value here in our start game function. This is what's linked to our, our button. So down here where you see the click, we see start game, and we are linking this function to that button. So when I click on it, I want to change the value of intro. Now I have to make it global. Anytime I'm changing the value of a global variable, I have to say global. So I'm going to say global intro, and then I'm going to set intro to false. Now run your code again. The canvas should show the intro. We see the intro right there. And when you click on start, you should see the ghost. And there's our ghost. Now the next step is to program the wait function. This will let a little bit of time lapse, just like you did with the photo album, and then get a new position for the ghost. Now you've already got part of the code for your wait. We did this in your lesson seven. So I want you to open your lesson seven, which is your photo album code. And we're gonna copy and paste the code for wait from there into this one, and then we're gonna make a few changes. So here's our photo album code, and right here we've got our whole weight. So I'm going to take the code that's just inside the weight, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come to our current program. Here where we have pass, I'm going to paste on top of this and just fix my indenting. Now we're going to make a few changes here. I'm going to want to change my X and Y, so besides having count, and I'm going to take out the count because I'm going to use that someplace else. So I'm going to take off this. I'm going to add in an X and a Y for my global. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to take this part off because I'm not using count here. And then besides getting an old time, a, a new value for our old time, we also want to get a new value for X and Y. Now this is basically the same thing that I'm doing here at the top in global, so I'm going to copy this, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to paste it. So when it is a new time, I'll just fix my indenting, when, when the time has elapsed, I'm going to set a new old time and get a new position for my X. Now this number right here tells me how many seconds. For our photo album, two seconds was a good amount of time to look at the picture. It's a long time for a click game, so I'm going to change it to a one, so I have one second before I get a new ghost. Now this is something that, that you can change. So if one second is still too long and you want to make it shorter or if you want to make it longer, but this is the number to adjust the amount of time that you wait before you get a new ghost. Now that I've got a wait with some code, I'm going to come down here into my draw and I'm going to take off this little hashtag so it's no longer a comment. Okay, now everything should work. Let's give this a try. I've got my intro. I click on start game and there's my ghosts appearing randomly every second. Now if I click on it, you'll notice that still nothing happens. The final step of this part of the code is to write code that will recognize if you are clicking on the ghost. This can seem a little complicated, so we're going to just kind of walk through each of it. Now, you might now, in the final version of this game, you'll notice that if I click somewhere, look down here in this box where it says mouse click, and it's showing you the position of my mouse click. So the first number, 277, is how far over, and my 175 is how far down. So this is my corner right here, how far over, how far down. Those two numbers are showing me where my mouse is clicking. That's the position or the pause, POS variable. And the first one is pause zero, and that stands for my X. And the second one is pause one, which stands for my Y. I'm going to use this variable, the pause variable, to determine if I am clicking inside the image. Here's a little illustration of how we're going to be checking. This POS pause zero is the X value of my actual mouse click. And this box is going to represent my ghost. When I, talk, when I go to the computer and I mention the position, X and Y is actually the center of the of the ghost and then I have the image size. So this edge right here is going to be the X position minus half of the image size and this edge is the X position plus half of the image size. So I'm going to be checking to see if my click 
is between this edge and this edge, and I'm going to check to see if the Y is between the top and the bottom. Okay, and the code is going to look like this. So we, this is going to be the get it function, and I'm going to have a global variable click that I change the value of, and it's going to be true or false. True if I click, and false otherwise. Here I'm checking the position of the click with one edge, and here's the position of the click with the other edge. I want to make sure it's in between. And then for this, the position of one is the Y. I check to see if it's between the top and the bottom. So if both of these are true, then it's clicked. Otherwise, I have false. So you want to get this typed into your code and then return to the video. Okay, now run your code. You shouldn't have any errors, but you might also notice that nothing happens even when you click on a ghost. So there's still one more thing to do. You add a button to the frame when you want a button clicked on. Similarly, you must add something for a mouse click. This line of code will go at the bottom with the other frame commands. You will define a mouse click handler that is linked to the get it function. We come down to our code, we're going to add it right into here. So we have a label, we have a button, we're going to add in our mouse click code. So we're going to have frame dot set mouse click handler, and then we link it to our function get it. So just be really careful with your typing, make sure that your spelling and your capitalization is all correct. Now run your code. Everything should work properly to this point. So I am incrementing my counter when I click, not incrementing when I don't click. Adjust the time in wait if you feel like one second is too long or too short. Then you want to save your URL, answer your exit ticket questions and you're ready to move on to 8b that where you will actually do the winning and losing.